I think that the essential problem is that the modern world of instantaneous uh, communications uh, and uh, the ability to form coalitions uh, and uh, to raise uh, money and promote causes uh, essentially uh, without end has made the representative legislature deeply problematic. Before we talk uh, about the second part of the major changes uh, in American politics since the 1970s, namely the, uh, the debt uh, and the spending problem, uh, let me just follow up with uh, uh, one question about the growth of the administrative state. Uh, what, if anything, can be done about it at this late date? Um. As a student of Ed Banfield, you're under no obligation to have a solution, yes. <laughs> but, but uh, I, I think you do have some, at least, uh, suggestions for improving the situation. The, the, the suggestions for improvement come in three forms. Uh, one is that we can, we can require procedures of the administrative agencies that are more uh, rigorous uh, and uh, uh, more formal. What they engage in now is informal uh, rulemaking. Uh, one might think that for a hundred uh, million dollar uh, or a billion dollar uh, decision, uh, one might have uh, some of the incidents of uh, adjudication, uh, where we have live witnesses, presentation of evidence, of statistics, uh, cross-examination, uh, the clash of competing uh, views. Mm -hmm. Uh, judges that are independent from the agencies uh, that have an incentive in regulatory growth, and there are many proposals for uh, uh, many proposals for changing administrative in procedures in these ways. Uh, second would be, and that would be a statutory change. That would be a statutory right. change. Uh, the second would be to heighten uh, judicial review. Judicial review is now very lax. Uh, to say that. To, to, all I have to do is be not arbitrary or capricious mm -hmm. uh, or abusive, uh, which is a pretty low threshold, and there are many proposals uh, for heightening uh, review. I myself would apply uh, an economic uh, test. I think that major regulations should have to show, uh, uh, and a court should be satisfied that the showing is reasonable, uh, that uh, the uh, costs that are going to uh, be imposed are worth the benefits. Mm -hmm. We're going to be getting greater benefits out of it. And, and that would be a statutory that change? That would be a statutory change as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and the third uh, would be to get uh, uh, additional legislative uh, oversight uh, uh, in the form of requiring that for also for some major subset of rules that impose on the private economy. I'm not talking about rules setting the opening and closing times at Yellowstone mm -hmm. Park. I'm talking about <laughs> rules that regulate the private economy, uh, that major rules uh, would have to be approved by both houses of Congress so that the single mission uh, blinkered uh, incentives of our special purpose agencies uh, would be uh, moderated uh, by the need to compose rules that would attract a legislative majority. In, in both houses. The, the latter uh, proposal is contained in what's called the RAINS Act. Yes, there is a act, the, the RAINS Act passed the House of Representatives uh, twice uh, in recent years. Uh, may I, may I there's explain no what it stands for? Regulations from the Executive in Need of Scrutiny Act. Right. Not yes. one of the it's best. Not, it's not, the, and it's, anyway. it, it sort of misstates Right. Uh, the problem. It could be uh, legislators from the Congress in need of taking accountability one way or the other for federal right. policy uh, just as well. Uh, I think that the, uh, that, that proposal was for major final regulations. Uh, I would modify it today in light of the uh, many controversies over statutory revisions that the President has made mm -hmm. uh, that uh, uh, I would have an expedited procedure for uh, 
uh, important revisions to statutes that the president wished to make uh, to get them uh, uh, before uh, Congress uh, for, uh, for votes. The president can say in some of these cases uh, that uh, Congress hadn't acted, I just had to do something because we had some statutory problem that was just a mess not <laughs> comporting with reality. Um, the president should go to Congress in, in, a, in a case like that. And that's, um that act is, a, is also obviously a statutory. The, the, those, are all, those are all statutory. Right. Uh, there, are, uh, uh, there are some that are simply uh, ideas for changes in court, Supreme Court constitutional mm -hmm. doctrine. Uh, the most important would be uh, to revive to some degree the non-delegation doctrine mm -hmm. created by the Schechter case one of the great moments in Supreme Court history, <laughs> uh, and uh, that, has late, that has fallen into disuetude, uh, and to restrict the degree. Uh, Congress may now delegate uh, authority to the executive branch to pursue the public interest, to pursue uh, clean air, safe drugs. Uh, those aren't real decisions. They're leaving the real decisions to the executive branch. Uh, and uh, I, would, I would favor a revival there. Um, what about Philip Hamburger's idea, who's a, a law professor and yes. an expert on administrative law, um, to have Congress begin to adopt wholesale the, um, the regulations of a small agency and then move down the list of federal agencies so that you turn regulations into actual statutes and in that exertion of responsibility you you uh, take command of them to or at least take uh, you become accountable for them in a way that Congress isn't quite yet right he seems to think that's better than the reins uh, I think yes um, it's a little it's a little like saying uh, we talked earlier about Ed Banfield mm -hmm. Ed Banfield used to say most policy reforms are along the lines of saying that the solution to the problem of drunkenness is greater temperance in the use of alcohol. <laughs> and that's my reform. Right. Um, uh, uh, the Hamburger book is a wonderful tour de raison. It's a, it's a terrific book. Uh, a lot of the critiques of the problems that we're having uh, are short on practicable solutions. And he's telling Congress to do exactly what it does not want to do. Uh, and I think it would be wonderful if Congress uh, did that. Uh, but I think we have to work with the world that we are in. And <clears throat> that is why I think it's important <clears throat> to focus on the causes of the growth of regulation in modern politics rather than simply Woodrow Wilson led us on the wrong turn, and we should read Philip Hamburger, and oh my, you know, the scales will fall from our eyes and we'll do the right thing. Um, this isn't just a matter of winning an argument. I think mm -hmm. we should try to win arguments, uh, but there are incentive problems, and uh, I, I think that the essential problem is that the modern world of instantaneous uh, communications uh, and uh, the ability to form coalitions uh, and uh, to raise uh, money and promote causes uh, essentially uh, without end has made the representative legislature deeply problematic. And we have to think of reforms that will revive the hierarchical structure of the Congress, uh, to revive its sense of being an establishment with responsibility. So I think that, I think that Professor Hamburger's proposals are great, uh, but they're actually another way of posing the dilemma uh, mm -hmm. we face, uh, which is that we've, we've lost a sense of competition between the two political branches, and we have to come up with reforms that will permit the legislative branch to be a, a serious player uh, in the constitutional mm -hmm. game again, mm -hmm. and take responsibility for uh, Maybe Congress is willing to stand up and vote in favor of the magician's mm -hmm. rabbit evacuation rule. I actually kind of doubt it. I think that that would be a great case where uh, simple populism uh, would lead <laughs> right. to the government 
pulling back from an obvious uh, uh, excess. Uh, uh, but we have to we have to get Congress to be willing to make those decisions rather than just you know it's the courts it's the executive branch. Mm -hmm.